we'll let you actually just keep singing while I ask RC this question. We Should we be surprised at this point beard. of Jalen Hurts' success in these big moments when it just seems like people doubt him, but he does it again? I think the, the correct answer was, what more can I say? Mm. And it's actually nothing because Is his it? play continues to do the talking. You know, he said, we'll see what happens when I no longer exist. Ooh. That's what Jay said at the end of the song. <laughs> and it's like, you know, what they were before me oh. with Carson Wentz, you win with Nick Foles, he takes over. And all he's done is continue to progress, continue to get better. And after last year, it wasn't about what he could do statistically. It was about how can you continue to lead this team and find ways to win. Dan said it all morning. Josh Allen was the best player in football yesterday. Mm -hmm. And for most of the day, that was enough for the Buffalo Bills to have a lead over the Philadelphia Eagles. But when it came down to the most crucial moments, once again, Jalen Hurts showed he was at his best. The same way he was when he stood across from Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Everything he's been throughout this season and then in the most important moments this weekend, again, it was the clutch throws and then using his legs to get in the end zone. I love that they came out after halftime and they kind of fell back into who they are. The as RPO a football run team. game started. Like, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost like, okay. This is the Philadelphia Eagles that we think can win a championship. Look at this drive. This was the first explosive run from DeAndre Swift in the entire game. Don't you believe that this was a this was a concerted effort to come out and make sure that Buffalo had to play you differently? Then you get the play action RPO out the stole. And then you create that same RPO action and you hit A.J. Brown in the end zone. But what before that, you saw the DeAndre Swift run. It was two runs right after that mm -hmm. that yep. they went to the running game and then decided to come off for that. Jalen got moving in the first half. Y'all know how I am about this. Why in the hell are you just standing him in the center of the pocket? Yeah, sure. Every single drop back. They got back to their DNA and that is on the ground with this offensive line and create an opportunity. Can I ask yeah. you a question? Yeah. They have new offensive coordinator Brian Johnson. In the first three plays of the game were straight drop backs. Mm -hmm. And it took until the second half to start involving DeAndre Swift. What happens during the week in game planning that would make them make that decision hmm. to go away from who they truly are at their fabric? Well, I think that first three plays is like how you want to try to attack a defense on paper or off on tape. Okay. And then as they get into the game, it's like, well, they're doing this. We have to do this. And it, I think I love the fact you asked that question because there's a lot of noise around Brian Johnson and yeah. sometimes it's negative. I think situationally he's becoming one of the better play callers in the NFL. If you look at the two touchdowns in the second half, you mentioned the A.J. Brown one. So this is that little RPO where there's a, a down by the wide receiver, kick it out to the tight end. They're going to run the same exact look two plays later, yep. except a different formation. Mm -hmm. Now, A.J. Brown at the bottom of the screen, he's going to go set like he's going to block. This time, the defenders come up, dump it off to A.J. The Devontae Smith is my favorite stretch touchdown in the game. Okay, so there's four guys at the bottom of the screen, right? This is that four by O. Oh. There's a little bit of a block, bubble. This time, he hands it off. Now, this mm. is late third quarter. Pay attention, top left part of the screen. Three plays later. Four by O formation just looks differently because the bunch. They're going to run the same exact look. There's going to be a little bit of a bluff block, bubble screen. Again, hands it off. Guys, the very next play, Devontae Smith touchdown. Four by O. Now they're going to motion Devontae out. He's going to run the seam. Yeah. Bubble by yeah. a, uh, Julio Jones. Yeah, that's nice. And then Devontae's touchdown. So when we talk about how to set plays up, Brian Johnson, RC, I got to give you your flowers, though. Because you said this two weeks ago, and we were all like, meh, look, look at where Jalen sits right now when it comes to trailing wow. in the second half for overtime. And I know we get into these conversations sometimes about, like, who's the best, all that. Oh, he didn't He didn't go to Ivy League school like Mina. He's not <laughs> smart enough to deduce that. <laughs> but I do think, I do think it Some makes – Ivy League shade here. <laughs> it makes Philly different than it does – at least in my eyes, hmm. San Francisco and Dallas. You know, one thing, too. We, we see who that quarterback is when it matters the most. Yeah, Dan, sorry to cut you off. No, I, I also think Jalen's getting healthier. And, and just being on that Eagles sideline on Monday Night Football, watching him with the knee, he wasn't really affected by it. They've done a lot to get him in a better position to be yeah. moving. The offense is different when he's mobile yeah. in the way that he can be. So, hey, a look at the AFC playoff picture. Right now, the 9-3 and three Ravens currently occupy the number one seed with the Chiefs, Jags, and Dolphins Ooh, sitting atop of their respective divisions. 
division. Uh. After that, it's pretty interesting. And after Sunday's loss, the Bills are on the outside looking in at six and six. It doesn't get any easier for Buffalo, who has the toughest remaining schedule in the league, according to ESPN Analytics. So that's going forward. But Marcus, why did Buffalo come up short yesterday against the Eagles? Opportunities missed. Now, don't we talked about the Eagles in the first uh, part of the show, so we know what their responsibility was. But it was opportunities missed to me. Like obviously the interception, y'all know I am about the turnovers. I'm not about to get no argument. It was critical in that game. But these were the ones. Like this was the one mm. that I thought could have yeah. had a chance. Obviously James Cook drops this football a for a touchdown. That's, six. That's not on Josh Allen. This right here is on Josh Allen. It's a great play by the cornerback. Can't throw an interception in that situation. And this was the one that Dan pointed out. How are you? Bro, we in week 12. We got to have an understanding with our guys that we working with all week long. And I'm not putting this on Josh or Gabe. One of them were wrong. They yeah. know who, who did the wrong thing. When you said that about the route, I thought he was running away from leverage, obviously, with the guy being on the inside yeah. of him. So you could have surmised that Josh probably should have put it over that shoulder. But we don't know what that communication was like. But when we get to the Buffalo Bills, as I say all the time, we are not judging you on winning football games. We are judging you on what you do in these particular situations. And this was a game where you had a phenomenal first half. Philly made all the mistakes. Yeah. And you had to continue to play to finish to close the game. Don't forget, Marcus, blocked field goal and, and missed, a missed field and goal. And a missed field goal. So it, it, is, it is so much more to the conversation than just what Josh Allen did, which I am going to criticize the hell out of the interception because it matters in, when you're talking about him. But the other part is championship teams – yeah, those type of plays seem to go in their favor. We, we've seen a lot of incredible performances by Josh. I think we've seen two superhero ones. Kansas City, 13 seconds. Defense couldn't get it done. Yesterday, with 450 yards, he scores with a buck 50. And if you watch Philadelphia's two-minute drive to have the chance to go get that game-tying field goal, one thing stands out. The defense never took away the easiest thing. Ball is on the left hash. This is first down. Throw. Into the left, into the boundary. That's the number one thing we want. Second down, throw into the left, mm. into the boundary. First down, the very next play. Throw into the left, into the boundary. Very next play, throw into the left, into the boundary. Very next play, throw into the left, into the boundary. Mm. So just wow. so everybody at home contextualizes this, when we get into two minute and the ball is on the hash, really our number one goal is can we get a completion into the boundary one, because it's the easiest, shortest throw. Two, or closest to the out of bounds. So Buffalo never, or, yeah, Buffalo never once forced Jalen Hurts to throw the harder throw. Hmm. Or forced the receivers to make the harder play to get out of bounds. Yeah, the way you put that out there, that looked really easy. <laughs> it, there's <laughs> never simple. one throw yeah. that's difficult hmm. there. Now, Jalen does it. Right. Yeah. But that's on the defense for not doing something <clears throat> to make the offense uncomfortable in that situation. All right, so Dan doesn't want to blame this Bills offense. That's okay. Um, it was week two of the Josh Allen, Joe Brady pairing. What do you think about it at this point? Arsene? I mean, the only pairing I've seen better was the Joe Brady, Joe Burrow pairing. Yeah. <laughs> and... It seems that, to me, giving Josh less has made Josh more. Mm. Mm. Being willing to consistently call runs, not necessarily be a team that's a running football team, but saying, hey, Josh, we're going to hand the football over. Think about late in that game. It was two consecutive handoffs to James Cook. Yep. And then the next play, you give the football to Latavius Murray, yep. which eventually leads to an RPO touchdown. It's because they, as a team, decided, you know what, guys? We don't have to worry about making Josh be Superman. We can know that Josh, when giving the opportunity, can go above the X's and O's. Think about the opportunities he had to use his legs to pick up third downs. When it wasn't there, he tucked the football use his athleticism. I think that that pairing going forward will give you the best Josh Allen, which in my estimation gives you a chance to win a championship. Now it's about getting all of that to come together for the Buffalo but see, Bills. Here's the thing for me, and it's always a touchy-go situation with Josh Allen because the critical mistakes yeah. are the reason sometimes why we don't believe you can get there. Yeah. And that is a fair assessment. It's not to say that Josh is not talented, but when we get into a conversation about championships and winning championships, we see that these type of mistakes are the small margins in which you lose these type of games. Yes. And that's the issue that I have I think in these particular situations. I think what we miss oftentimes, too, though, we have these conversations about Josh. It was Jalen Hurts 
who outplayed him or who out executed late. And in the other game, it was Patrick Mahomes when you say those two superhuman opportunities. Yeah, and that may be why he's 0 6 in overtime games. <laughs> it just That's the thing. Who he's playing against.